ஹரி ஓம் தத் சத் வெல்கம் டு ஜோதிர்மய யோகா வி ஃபோக்கஸ் ஆன் ஸ்பிரிச்சுவாலிட்டி அ ஜேர்னி டு செல்ஃப் ரியலைசேஷன் ப்ளீஸ் சப்ஸ்கிரைப் ஃபார் த மிஸ்டிக்கல் மீனிங்ஸ் ஆஃப் த ஸ்கிரிப்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் என்ஜாயிங் டெய்லி சத் சங் வித் அஸ் வி ஆர் கரண்ட்லி எக்ஸ்ப்ளோரிங் த புக் தி ஆர்ட் ஆஃப் பாசிட்டிவ் ஃபீலிங் ஆத்தர்ட் பை சுவாமி ஜோதிர்மயநந்த ஜி அண்ட் நரேட்டட் பை மை செல்ஃப் சுவாமி நிக்கிலநந்தா வி ஆர் கரண்ட்லி discussing the topic of greed or lobha and yesterday we covered it in some detail and we will continue if desire is fulfilled there can develop two forms of agitation the initial elation of getting what you wanted and the all consuming greed that ensues because now you want more and more of it if desire is unfulfilled or frustrated the agitation of anger develops you immediately want to blame someone or something for keeping you from having what you desire as your frustrated desire becomes suppressed the agitation of craving or trishna invades the mind if you didn't satisfy some desire then your imagination convinces you how much you are suffering because of this lack thus the desire becomes craving so kama krodha and lobha desire anger and greed are intimately related further the mind that is invaded by these demoniac qualities becomes afflicted with delusion and loss of pure reason and easily follows a degraded and self-destructive course of action which yields nothing but misery and despair this truth is well illustrated by the following story from the middle east the merchant who was blinded by greed there was once a merchant in the middle east who had many camels animals which used to be the sole mode of transportation in desert lands just as nowadays people rent cars in ancient times people rented camels so whenever travelers wherever they wanted to go and do some business in the desert this merchant would rent them as many camels as they needed one day an ascetic who possessed mystical powers came to the merchant and said i need many camels and your assistance for a special project that will make you rich would you like to help me of course replied the merchant what type of assistance do you need i have come to know about a great treasure of precious jewels gold and silver and i will need your help to dig it up and 30 camels to carry it as payment i will give you one camel load of treasure as your very own this will make you so rich that you will not have to work any more for the rest of your life the merchant accepted the offer eagerly and they set out across the desert with the help of the ascetic special psychic powers they located the exact spot where the treasure was buried and dug up many treasure chests full of diamonds rubies emeralds gold silver which they loaded on the 30 camels then they prepared to depart the merchant was thrill- thrilled beyond words with his one camel load share of the treasure never had he seen such precious stones and metals in such abundance and he hurried homewards to secure his wealth but on the way he thought that ascetic is getting almost all the treasure and he is just a mendicant he doesn't have a wife and children as i do what is he going to do with all that treasure so he went back to the ascetic who was leading the other camel laden with jewels and said You are a mendicant, a man of God. What are you going to do with all this treasure? The ascetic, partly because of his wisdom and partly because of his common sense in realizing that he was all alone and that the merchant was much stronger, responded, "You're right. I don't need so much. You can have 9 more camel loads if you like." 
eagerly. The merchant took the additional camels laden with treasure and set out again for home. After a little while, though he began to think again, wouldn't it be better to take more of the treasure? After all, the ascetic is a man of renunciation. Such a treasure will just distract his mind from his prayers and austerities. So he turned back to the mendicant once again and said, Why should you get so much treasure? If you take so much, your mind will become distracted and you won't devote your time to meditation. You may even fall from your spiritual path. I think that it would be better if both of us divided the treasure 50-50. Trying to appease the men, merchant's increasing greed, the ascetic answered, That's all right with me. Go ahead and take what you have asked for. So the merchant loaded up the additional treasure and departed. But then again he thought to himself, Why should I leave any of the treasure with him? As a mendicant, he doesn't know how to manage money. I am a merchant and I will know how to handle it in a much better way. I will be doing him a big favor by freeing him from the pressure of these material responsibilities. So the greedy merchant went back again and asked the ascetic, Why do you need more than one camel load of this treasure? It will only be a burden for you in every respect. All right, responded the ascetic, take everything but one load and go to your way. So the merchant departed again and then was again overcome by his greed and for that last camel load. Hurrying back to the ascetic, he said, with your psychic powers, you can find treasure buried under the earth anytime you want. For all the work I have done, I should have the rest of the jewels for myself. Fine, the ascetic said, sensing that the merchant's greedy desires would drive him to beat him up if he didn't agree to the demands. Take it all. I'll just keep this little box that we found along the treasure. The ointment inside will be enough for me. While the merchant was preparing again to depart, his mind wouldn't let him rest. That mendicant can't let me have the entire treasure with no hesitation. He could let me have the treasure. He gave me everything. Apparently he's scared. But what's with that box? Why is he not giving me that box? Why is he clinging on to it? There must be some secret in it. I've got to go back and find out what's so special about that box. So he went back to the man again and asked, Please tell me what's in that box. What secret does it hold? Replied the mendicant, It's a magic ointment. If you apply a drop of it to one of your eyes, you will be able to see all the buried treasure anywhere in the world. Then you will be able to recover however much you want. Please apply a drop to my eye and let me see for myself. I want to see if this ointment really works. So the ascetic applied one drop to his eye and immediately the merchant saw treasures everywhere, wherever they were buried. He was ecstatic. This is fantastic. Please apply the ointment to the other eye also. But the ascetic refused. No. The virtue of the ointment is that if it is applied to one eye, it will reveal all the treasures. If it is applied to both eyes, it will make a person blind. But the merchant wouldn't hear of this. He was positive that the ascetic was hiding some secret. He reasoned that if one drop in one eye gave him so much, think of what another drop in the other eye would give. He insisted and pleaded with the mendicant. Finally, the mendicant relented. Very well, I shall apply the ointment to the other eye. But understand that I do so at your own risk. I have already warned you what will happen. The moment he applied it to the other eye, the merchant became stone blind. He couldn't see anything. The ascetic laughed, packed up all the treasure that had been 
the merchants and rode off, leaving him blind and miserable. The merchant lived the rest of his days in a pathetic and frustrated condition because the only way he could make a living was through begging. When people came to give him alms, he would say, I shall accept your gift if you will box my ears first. <laughs> then you can give me whatever you like. This appealed to many crude people who took great delight in slapping and hitting him. One day the king of the country came to him in disguise. He thought that the phenomenon of a blind beggar asking to be beaten before taking arms was very strange. So he brought him to the royal court and asked him, Why do you ask for such gross treatment from people? I will not tolerate it. It is uncultured. Then the poor man told the king the story of how he had brought such misery upon himself through his uncontrolled desire and greed. Hearing the sad tale, the king understood and of course granted him royal favor that made his life a little bit easier. This story presents an exaggerated but quite true description of greed. Just like the merchant in the story, every soul in the world process wants to have objects of enjoyment. If this natural need is kept under control by a proper understanding of life and its goals, it does not lead to problems. Unfortunately, however, the human mind tends to be forever discontented with whatever it has in the world and greedily desires more and more. The idea that you will become more comfortable, more relaxed and more fulfilled by acquiring more and more possessions, fame, power is based upon illusion. No one finds peace and contentment by having more of anything except philosophical understanding. So we will continue the story, this beautiful journey of greed and how to remove one vice at a time in our daily satsangs. This is Swami Nikhilanand. Hari Om Tatsat.